Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds, and I cannot wait to share all of my keto, low-carb secrets with you during Season 5. Get ready for a fast ride, because the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska is going to get you inspired and help you to be successful. Let's get started. Signs that you are doing keto right. Signs that you are doing keto right. So give me a thumbs up if you are looking today for some validation and some encouragement because I'm going to outline seven. Here's my big giant balloon number so you can remember and count along with me. I'm going to be going through seven signs that you are doing keto right. So comment, share, look for these seven things and tell me if you are doing all seven of them. We'll see what the report card gives you at the end of our presentation together. Doesn't that sound fun? Should we get started? I know, I'm going to try to go faster today. No more chit-chat. <laughs> no more chit-chat, Stephanie. We got to get moving, right? We have valuable time today, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of our seven items. So is everybody with me so far? You're with me? All right, who's going to get an A-plus today? Do you think you're going to get an A-plus? <laughs> you can tell me, or maybe you're getting a C or a B. We'll find out. But anyway, I want to give you seven different signs that you are doing keto right. So keep track. Number one, do you have realistic expectations about your weight loss? Do you have realistic expectations about your weight loss? Now, the reason why I say this is some people, you know, they think they're doing keto right, quote unquote. But then for some reason, oh, I'm going to pull out this giant visual aid here. They're like, well, I'm not on track. You know, I was going to lose 10 pounds and then 40 pounds and then 30 pounds. And then by this month, I'm going to lose this. And then by Christmas, that. And then by my birthday, that. And they have got this timetable in their head that is like militant. It might be more weight loss than their body can handle at any given time, depending on their um, size, their age, what medications they're on, their gender, right? There's a lot going on when it comes to weight loss. It's not like, like the scientific Doop, 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 you know, put this input and get this output. I think we need to tone down our realistic expectations, tone down the craziness and have those realistic expectations about weight loss. That's what I want to say to you because every week is not going to be the same. You're not going to have, you know, whoosh, huge weight loss every single time that you hop on the scale. In fact, um, some of you out there, this is all part of number one. Some of you out there may have experienced, it's all part of number one, losing inches. Losing inches, but not necessarily losing pounds. Has that happened to you? Has it? Tell me in the comments um, what you think about this for number one, because this is a real good indicator if you are doing keto the correct way, that you have realistic expectations, that every week may be different and you are embracing it and loving it. And sometimes you see that your body is changing shape. You might be getting rid of that carb puffiness in the face. You might put on some clothes that didn't fit you before, or they were a little tight in spots, and then suddenly those items are fitting differently. Here's my Dirty Lazy Keto sweatshirt. You know, even loose clothes I find fit differently when I lose weight. Sometimes the arms are different or the neck's different, or it just looks different. I'll get compliments on it. So let me know if that's happened to you, and how cute is this sweatshirt? This is, um, you can order your own on the Dirty Lazy Keto shop, on the store, on the website. You can check that out. But seriously, I want to know if that's happened to you about the tape measure, about losing pounds versus inches versus inches versus pounds, the clothes, if you feel different. But that's all part of number one. And that's how I know you're doing the keto diet correctly is if you have those realistic expectations and you're looking for non-scale victories, not just the scale, not just the number. So how we do on, on that one? Has that happened? Do you have a thought on that? Or are you kind of like, oh? Oh, she called me out. <laughs> tell me what you guys think on that one. Put some comments in. Tell me your reaction. And while you're doing that, we're going to spin the wheel. Because I love to give away a prize. And we'll pick someone at the end, right? I'll wait till everyone is talking and participating. So at the end of our presentation, I'll be picking a winner. And the prize today is going to be ooh, a pack of keto stickers. Love that. And those are all custom designed um, by an artist of my hiring. And I'll send you a whole pack, like a couple of big ones, a bunch of little ones. And that'll be super cute. You'll love that. So let me know if you want to win 
the stickers. And if you don't get chosen and you're sad, 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 and there's, you know, all sorts of fun little prizes I give out every week and maybe you wanted one and you've never gotten picked, keep in mind that I am starting to sell them at cost at the Dirty Lazy Keto Shop on Etsy. So I'm selling them at a cost. It's basically just me shipping them to you. And it's all the little prizes and doodads that I've been collecting over the last couple of years, you know, like the magnet and the lunch pail and the peel and stick and the keto stickers and this and that and the other. So many fun things, right? The kitchen timer, the pot holder. I have a whole, I mean, they're just all over the place. Aprons. So if you're interested in any of those prizes, check out etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash the dirty lazy keto shop all together. Got it? So you can check that out and it's extra fun. And that way you can get the prize that you deserve. You don't have to wait for me to pick you. Um, let's move on to number two, because we're talking today about signs you are doing keto right. Signs you are doing keto right. So let's move on to number two. My question for you is number two. Are you eating real food? <laughs> and I say this because so many people are just eating keto snacks and they're like, I'm doing keto because I bought everything at the store that says keto. So are you eating real food or are you eating keto snacks? This is an important item to think about because sometimes these keto snacks are just full of all sorts of craziness that causes trouble, right? And they're often easy to overeat because they're so delicious. Now, I'm not saying you can't have them, but I want to make sure that you are eating the majority of the foods that you, in your day-to-day, -day, real food. So I'll give you an example about what I had for dinner last night. I baked salmon. I bought a huge salmon at Costco last night or yesterday. And then I baked it in my oven at like 425 for like a half an hour. And I baked it in butter with dill and salt. And oh my gosh, fresh dill, butter, and salt. It was heavenly. So delicious. And I had myself a nice huge serving. I didn't have three ounces like the normal serving size. I think I must have had six or seven. Huge piece. And it was so fabulous and so rich and so delicious. And on the side, I had a big old bowl of fresh green beans um, with plenty of salt. Mm, I want to eat one right now, but I don't want to get green beans in my teeth. That'd be embarrassing. Um, so that was really, really good dinner. And it was kind of fancy for me to eat fresh fish. I try to anyway. I know it's so good for you, but it's like, I got to go to the store. I got to buy it, blah, blah, blah. But so, so good and so healthy. Um, yesterday at lunch, just out of, in case you're curious, people always say, what do you eat? Yesterday for lunch, I was out to eat for work and I had Olive Garden. I know you're like, oh, Olive Garden, is she crazy? Yes, I have a whole video on what to eat at Olive Garden other than pasta, by the way. Um, but what I ordered is a chicken margarita and it was chicken baked in pesto with cheese bubbled on top and a side of broccoli, it was so good. And it came with a salad. Love the salads there. I'll get the no croutons, I'll throw these away. And then I'll ask for extra olives, maybe a little extra tomato. This is a to-go salad here, just to show you the Olive Garden salad. Um, and then I'll eat as much as I want. So good. Um, breakfast yesterday, I had a Faye yogurt with a little vanilla and some sugar-free sweetener. And then I topped that with macadamia nuts. And then I pretty much snacked all day on all sorts of other yummy things. So hopefully that's helpful to you. I want to just ask you, are you eating real food? That's all about number two. I gave you some examples of real food that I'm eating that have nothing to do with just keto, keto, keto type labeled items from the grocery store. I hope that helps. Number three, moving on today. We're going, we're going, we're going. How are we doing on your, um, are you getting a, like, I'm getting an A, anyone? <laughs> are you getting a B? How are you doing so far? Well, let's move on to number three. Let's see how we're still doing on our, you know you're on track with keto if you're doing these things. So number three, are you in ketosis? or are you close to getting back into ketosis? This is an important part of the keto diet. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're like, ketosis? What is ketosis? <laughs> okay, that's kind of a problem. And if you were on the Weight Watcher diet, wouldn't you wanna know where Weight Watchers was located when you went to your Weight Watcher meetings? Well, if you are in the keto diet, you need to know what ketosis is. This is like an integral part. This is the whole basis of what we are doing here and how we're losing weight. 
So it's a fat burning state. Oh, here's my fire. It's a fiery, fat burning state. See the burning? <laughs> it's my visual aid. Work with me. Um, but it's a fat burning state that switches your body from burning glucose and carbs to burning fat and ketones in order to give your body energy and to survive. So you got to get into ketosis or get your little booty back into ketosis. That is an important part of being on track to do the keto diet correctly. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're kind of panicking right now, like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what ketosis means. How do I get in ketosis? Now, I understand a lot of you feel like you could just jump right in and figure it out by watching a couple of videos. Yes, you can. I'm here to support you, but I do recommend that you get yourself an instruction guide. And this is why I wrote Extra Easy Keto. It's seven days to ketogenic weight loss on a low-carb diet. Extra easy keto. Every day I break it up. Day one, do this. Day two, do this. Day three, do this. Has sample menus, food lists, cheat sheets, you name it. It explains it all right here, how to get in ketosis and stay there. I really think you need that book because otherwise you might be floundering and being like, I have no idea what she's talking about. And that is a huge problem, right? That means you are not on track to lose weight on the keto diet if you don't know what ketosis is or how to bring it about in your body. You got to make that switch from getting off the, the carbs, the carb train. Um, I will link up a video next that will go into this topic a little bit more, and it's extra fun. It's called Cut Carbs on Keto. Cut carbs. My scissors. <laughs> Cut carbs on keto. Cut carbs on keto. That'll be the next video. So that way, if you know what ketosis is, you kind of know what you're doing there a little bit, but you just need to maybe trim some more carbs from your diet. That will help you get into ketosis. Watch that video. Lots of good tips and tricks there. Moving on to number four. Number four. <laughs> Are we doing good? How are we doing? Anybody getting an A plus so far? Okay. Number four. Here's my recommendation. Don't be afraid of vegetables. Are you afraid of vegetables? Because if you are, that could be a challenge for being on track to doing the keto diet the right way. I want you to lose weight and be in ketosis, yes, but I also want you to be healthy. I want you to feel good. I want you to have proper, this is an important one, digestion. Here's the poop hat, people. It's coming out. The poop hat is coming out. Watch out for the poop hat. I know you love it, but it's true. If you're just eating pepperoni and cheese all day and you're like, I'm on keto, that might be a huge problem when it comes to our complete health, if you know what I'm saying. Things will get blocked up and then you'll feel awful and terrible. And you need to have those nutrients, those vitamins, those minerals that are inside of vegetables in addition to the fiber in order to maintain your health, to be having that strong digestive system. A lot of people think that your digestive system is a window into immunity where it can help you prevent diseases and stay healthy overall. Now, it's up to you how you think about that. But I do recommend that you increase the amount of low carb, healthy, high fiber vegetables in order to feel good, to feel healthy, and to have a nutritious, healthier way of losing weight and being successful on the keto diet. I'm always liking to talk about this number four, the poop pillow. <laughs> it's true though. It's all kind of tied in together, isn't it? Are we doing good so far? Is anybody doing good on all one, two, three, and four? Because remember, I'm going to go all the way to seven. So I want to know what your thoughts are. What do you guys think? Can you be successful on keto without having these um, criteria met? Tell me what your thoughts are. Let's move on to number five. Number five. I like my little numbers. They keep me focused. <laughs> number five. Here is something to think about. Are you including real protein at every meal? Or are you relying pretty heavily or even exclusively on protein bars or protein drinks? <gasps> now, if you are, quote unquote, doing keto the right way, eating real food, right? That was something we talked about earlier. Real food, real protein sources are going to digest differently in your body and help you stay full and happy and satisfied and give you that nutrition that you need rather than just relying on these very tasty milkshake flavored protein drinks and the like. There's a lot of them out there, right? 
And we love the taste of some of these products. I am not lying when I say I love them too. <laughs> They're delicious, right? They're made to taste like cookies and chips, like the Quest chips, right? Or granola bars or candy bars. They're made to taste so yummy milkshakes. So we can't help but be drawn to them. And I get it. However, doing the keto diet the right way means picking and choosing foods that are sustainable and healthy for your whole body, not just weight loss, and something that you can do forever. Things that aren't like requiring specialty products, especially trips to the store. Oh, what if I didn't have my protein drink? Then I can't do keto, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, it's a crutch and an excuse for when that stuff isn't available. You feel me? Tell me what you guys think about number five. I know that's a tough one, but is anyone feeling like they're on track? Are you doing pretty good so far? I want to talk to you about number six. Number six is no longer chasing the cheat day. Oh, chasing the cheat day. Now, what am I talking about here? Chasing the cheat day. What is it that people dream about? What do you dream about when you're chasing the cheat day? Is it something to do with like snack food, like crackers or chips? Tell me in the comments. Don't be shy. Are you chasing noodles or pasta or potatoes? That sort of thing. Are you chasing the cheat day when it comes to like bread or rice, pancakes, sweets? Tell me what it is you are chasing. Or maybe you're not chasing it at all. But I really do feel like it's a sign of doing the keto diet correctly when you're no longer chasing these items, constantly eating them, and then getting back on the keto diet, and then trying to go off for this cheat day, and then going off, and then going on, and then going on, and then going off, and then going off, and then having candy, and then having pancakes, and then getting mad when the keto diet doesn't work. And then all of a sudden, you're like, ah, in this giant, vicious cycle. Does that ever happen to any of you guys? It is a vicious cycle, and if you are trapped in that cheat day mentality, I got to have it, I got to have it, I got to have it, I don't feel like you are doing the keto diet correctly. And I feel like that's something to let go of in order to move forward and really be successful on your journey. Now, I talk a lot about this concept in Dirty Lazy Keto, Get Started Losing Weight While Breaking the Rules. And specifically, if you have your copy, I want you to look at page 185. Because on page 185, there is this amazing chart that I want you to study and look at, really study it, really, really think about each item and circle it, highlight, make notes if you need to. But this chart is called Rethink the Cheat. Rethink the Cheat on page 185. And this whole chapter just dives deep into that concept and might help counsel you away from that mentality. Hopefully it will. That's the plan anyway. But a lot of people have told me that that chart is so powerful and it really made the difference and helped them to get away from that cheat day chase and to start focusing on their health and the longevity that this lifestyle has to offer them. What do you guys think? <laughs> You're all, yes, 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 yes. Okay, you starting to feel me? You starting to get excited? Okay. Let's move on to number seven because I had seven things I wanted to share with you guys today. Number seven these are all signs, symptoms, strategies, things that you can think about for if you are doing the keto diet correctly, right? These are stumbling blocks for some. These are strengths for others. But think about each one of these individually and think how it might apply to you. Number seven, stop calling keto a diet. Stop calling keto a diet. And when I say diet, I'm not talking about like, oh, what, you know, one's diet that they consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I'm using it more in a nutritious uh, scientific type word that the way it was supposed to be intended. But a lot of people will say keto diet. I'm on the keto diet. And they're implying with number seven that it's temporary. They're like, oh, well, I'm just on this keto diet, you know, because I'm going to do, 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 and then I'm going to lose 10 pounds and I'm going to, you know, go here on the, my cruise. That is what I want you to be aware of. That implies a temporary way of eating. And the language that you're using is very powerful because you might be convincing yourself, if you're saying it in that tone, you might be convincing yourself that you're not gonna do it for very long. You might be convincing yourself you don't need to. You'll just be, you know, a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, and then you'll be done with it. What do you guys think? 
That's an important one, right? It's that mindset. And what I'd like to think about is that avoiding sugar, avoiding sugar is not something you do just temporarily. I mean, this stuff is horrible for you, right? High carb foods. I'm going to reach in here and grab, oh, cinnamon toast crunch cereal. <laughs> but high carb foods, even, you know, things that look kind of healthy like bananas or bran muffins, oatmeal, you know, these foods have a lot of carbs and they cause insulin issues just like candy and sugar does for a lot of us out there. And even though people say, oh, it's not normal to not eat these things, blah, blah, I got to have toast or I'm going to die. Yeah, I disagree. And I think a lot of us out there, and that's why you're watching this, right? That's why you are on the keto diet, is that we're not able to tolerate little bits of those food in moderation, quote unquote. Either our bodies react poorly or it triggers some psychological, emotional issues where we can't stop eating those foods. It's like a trigger. And then a lot of us just simply have health problems as a result of eating any amount of high sugar or high carb inflammatory foods. People get arthritis, skin breaks out, hormones go all over the place, right? Do you see where I'm going with this? Diabetes, blood sugar issues. I could go on and on. I mean, here's the thing, you guys. Getting into ketosis, losing weight, it doesn't have to be so complicated. I mean, the strategies that I'm sharing with you today, these seven areas to look at, this is what prompted me to lose 140 pounds. I've kept this weight off now for a decade, which is crazy. Um, my daughter was just a little tiny thing, and she remembers me as old mommy. She calls me old mommy in those pictures. And now she's in college, and she really only knows me as who I am today. She has like old mommy memories in her brain, but most of her memories are of me being an active, healthy, um, you know, young, fit person that isn't afraid to go on a bike ride with her or a hike or that does a marathon or a 5K, that I go swimming and get in and out of boats on vacation, and then I'm choosing the active life lifestyle versus sedentary TV watching, not participating, kind of being on the sidelines. So this is a solution really to a long-term problem that a lot of us can't seem to lick in any other way. And you shouldn't feel like you're alone in this. This is why I do the weekly videos. This is why I have the support groups that have written eight books for you guys. Um, I'm trying to come up with different ways to reach you via the podcast that you can listen to, just the auditory, the support groups like we're doing, um, the YouTube videos, the Instagram, you know, the free newsletter that I have. I'm trying to come up with all sorts of fun ways to reach you where you're at on topics that you're interested in to support you every step of the way. Because the more people that get on board and start sharing their journey about how this is miraculous and how we are transforming ourselves, you know, the more we're going to help others and our kids and then the next generation and so on and so forth. So I'm so proud of you. Did I say that already? I'm so proud of you for being here. I want to give you a gold star again. And I will coach you through all these basics. I'll coach you through every step, you know, support you every little bit of the way. I just want to give you a round of applause for being here. And I'm so proud of you. Keep up the great work. Remember, I'm going to tee up that next video. It's called Cut Carbs on Keto. Cut Carbs on Keto. So thank you so much for watching and for listening. You did a great job today. And I will see you every week, right? Every week with a brand new topic and with a new video. Isn't that fun? So give yourself a round of applause. Say, yay me. Yay me. Thanks for joining me on the adventure today with the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast. If you have questions about what we talked about, head over to my website, dirtylazyketo.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for my free newsletter.